Hello everyone, my name is Fred, and I recently finished creating my stylized material for Substance Painter. With this material, you can create volumetric stylized textures for your 3D models. In this video, I'll show you how the material is set up and explain how to work with it correctly to achieve a beautiful result. As an example, I'll use this stylized lantern and demonstrate how the pre-configured presets for various materials like stone, wood, and metal work. To start, simply drag the material onto the model, and you'll notice how the model immediately turns turquoise. This is a basic material set up just for visuals. I apply a black mask to the material and highlight the object I need. Now, let's go to the presets menu. There are several presets here. I'll start by choosing wood. Let's apply the material to the model again and use a black mask to select the stone element. Next, in the presets, I choose the stone material. This is a pre-configured stone material, but you can also adjust it manually based on your specific needs. I drag the material onto our model again and select the metal parts using a black mask. For selection, I use color selection. It helps me select parts by the ID map. Now, let's go to the material settings and choose a preset, but this time, a metallic one. As you can see, we have a volumetric stylized base for further texturing. In just one minute, I get high quality textures that can be enhanced with additional layers or mixed with smart materials. If you're into hand painting, you can use this material to create base textures and paint over them in 3D code. If you need to change the light or adjust the lighting, you can expand the parameters and fine tune your material. But to do this correctly, I want to explain the material's logic in detail, using the stylized door as an example, which is made based on concept art from the game Sea of Thieves. I also drag FT Diffuse onto the model and apply a black mask. Let's select the door planks and go through all the material functions using them as an example. The planks are wooden, so I'll immediately choose wood in the presets and disable all material parameters to show what each parameter is responsible for and what visual effect it creates. For this, I expand each parameter and change the value from on to off. Now, for convenience, I'll hide all parameters and let's start from the list. In the presets, there are pre-configured materials for wood, metal, and stone. In the top tabs, you can find the technical description of the material itself. So, the very first parameter is diffuse. It is responsible for filling the entire model with color. In the top color palette, the main color is set. And in the bottom palette, you can choose the shadow color. Also, with the shadow spread slider, you can adjust the intensity of the shadow fill. In the cavity menu, you can enable basic cavity and adjust its transparency, contrast, and blur. The first slider is for transparency, the second for contrast, and the third blur for blurring. If you enable the second parameter, cavity blur, additional patterns will appear on the model, which will be slightly wider. And with the sliders, you can also adjust a more beautiful visual. The edges parameter is responsible for sharp edges on your model. With the thickness slider, you adjust the generation of corners. You can set them to be everywhere, automatically generated in places. The blur slider is responsible for blurring the corners. You could say you can make them more contrasting, or on the contrary, blurry. With the palette, you can assign the desired color. And with the side slider, adjust the intensity of the color itself. The next parameter is responsible for the vertical gradient, which creates a bright light from above your model. Here, there is also a palette for choosing the desired color. The side slider is for the intensity of the parameter itself and the lower sliders. The first is for the gradient size and the lower one for its contrast. This way, you can create unique gradients on your objects in just a few seconds. The lower gradient parameter works on the same principle as the previous parameter only the gradients are generated from the bottom of your model. I want to note that these gradients have their unique blending type and work according to the stylization logic. The lower gradient uses a dark blending mode, while the upper gradient uses a light blending mode. The ambient occlusion parameters are responsible for shadow overlay on your model. With the side slider, you can adjust the shadow color intensity. The intensity slider is responsible for shadow generation, you could say, for multiplying the ambient occlusion map. 
With the lower contrast slider, you can make the shadow more contrasting or on the contrary, soft. Before I show you the most important parameter of this material, I want to remind you that you can buy this material on my art station via the link in the description. If you're in the CIS, you can buy it in my VK community also via the link in the description. The last and most essential parameter is specular light, which is responsible for lighting settings on your model. In the color palette, you can also choose the desired color and with the side slider, adjust the saturation of that color. The first circular slider is for rotating the light lamp along the horizontal axis around your model. And the second circular slider is for rotating the lamp along the vertical axis also around your model. You can combine these two parameters and set a unique light direction. The light source parameter is responsible for the number of light sources. I use two because it's the most optimal choice to light the model from both sides. If I set the value to one now, the light behind the model will disappear. If necessary, you can increase the number of light sources to four. The intensity sliders for the brightness of the lamp glow, and the size sliders for the size of the so-called highlights from the light sources. In this particular example, it's not very noticeable, but you can still see how it works. In just a few clicks, I managed to set up this stylized wood texture. You can use this material as a solid base for PBR texturing or as the main fill before hand painting. Overall, I managed to paint this stylized door like this, and soon a new video with the full process will be released on my channel. In the meantime, I wish you good luck and creative success. This was Fred, see you soon.